In honour of International Women's Day, we sit down with Slangwa Dredging's Managing Director, Tehlip Kim, to talk about her journey navigating corporate Malaysia and what needs to fundamentally change in gender politics. So you've been on Slangwa Dredging's board for 23 years and Managing Director for 21, so you were just about like 28 years old when you took over as Executive Director now. How has the journey been? There was a reason why I came on the Sl Slang Out Dredging's board. It was because um, my father had Parkinson's, he was old, um, my mother had cancer, and it was a natural progression for me to go on to the board. I'm the youngest of a family of five. I had a lot of older brothers and sisters, but they were all professionals. Believe me, I had to learn along the way how to manage the company. I had to learn. You know, I kept on falling, but I had to pick myself up. In 2006, yeah. 2007, my oldest son, he was diagnosed with autism. I had to put myself in his situation and try to make a connection with him. What I did was I took my own personal situation back to the workplace. I was able to, after that, be able to relate to what it was like you know, walking through a show unit, like here. I could tell that whether the spaces were too big or too small, whether the living room was too big or small, because I could feel that I was actually in a show unit when I looked at certain things two-dimensionally. To me, that was a revelation. And that was when I developed SDB's DNA. You dealt with scepticism from a young age and you know with Slango Dredging being a family business which you inherited from your late father 21 years ago. How did you deal with glass ceiling issues because at that time it was the start of the Asian financial crisis as well. I would say that throughout my whole career I've had a lot of crisis, mini crisis okay. <laughs> and when my son was diagnosed with autism that was when I started um, the property development after my parents had passed on. Then I went, ventured into Singapore and it was something completely new. So what I'd like to say that is that emotionally, as a CEO, mm. we have to be strong. Mm. And really, it's a journey. As an entrepreneur, I would say that it's easier in, in our younger days mm. to have crisis than it is when we're older and to have our first crisis so that we know how to pick ourselves up, we know how to learn from our mistakes, and we know how to get along in life. The sad thing is that women do get put more under the microscope, so tell us how do you deal with pressure like that? I do meditate. What meditation does for me is that it allows me to detach some of the things that are no good. I mean with the good things. Because sometimes when we have a mini crisis um, and we've got some unfortunate news, bad news coming, the bad news always clouds whatever good we've got. This journey, I've changed throughout my years. When I was in my 20s and 30s, I thought that I had to be successful because I was CEO at that age. And I thought, oh, to be successful, we have to wear branded clothes. <laughs> we have to behave in a certain way. We have to speak well. It takes age, experience, um, to get us to where we are now. The statistics are quite depressing, you know, with women making up only 19% of board members in PLCs and even these are companies valued no less than 2 billion ringgit. So, you know, in your opinion, what do you think is needed to increase participation? For my company, SDB, women make up 50% of my senior management. We have flexible working hours. We feel that there should be a balanced life. We want the career woman to come to work knowing that they can during that period of time, come to work at 7, beat the jam, come to work, do what they're good at doing, go home, and after that, be a mother. We also have um, certain people, certain staff that work a four-day week. 
they, they do as much as the five day week. It doesn't matter. It's really up to that person how much they put in. So we are flexible working hours and I think it works. We know that you are very big on CSR programs. So could you tell us some of your uh, best achievements in terms of you know, CSR initiatives or some of the things that you hold closely to heart? For me, CSR, you know, I have one to wash and one to juice. Basically, they are businesses that I've started up for adults with disabilities. I wanted these adults with disabilities to feel that there is a place here for them. I wanted to give them a sense of self-worth and self-confidence. I don't want my world to be so small. I want it to be big. I want to take into consideration other families with disabilities as well, and I want to help them. What is your advice to women who you know, aspire to make it big in male-dominated businesses like real estate? Genetically um, and culturally, women in Asia tend to think that their roles are they should stay at home, they should look after the family, ferry the kids. What they've done is they put themselves at the bottom of the list. I think it's important to have a career as well as to be a mother. Besides contributing to the family, we talk to our peers, we know what's happening around the world, we are at work, we, we know what's happening around the world, we know what's happening in the economy and we go home, we bring it home and we get a lot of respect from our husbands, from our families and we know what we're talking about.